y'all, the practitioner here. This is my first video on the Ubuntu system. I finally managed to get a piece of software which now allows my webcam to work on the new operating system. Anyway, this is a continuation on my previous video uh, about the autistic savantism. I took the liberty of taking a look at the responses and realizing the possibility there might be something flawed with the test. I proceeded to email Dr. Alan Snyder, the uh, scientist whose work the test I posted in the links in the previous video was supposedly based on. Um, I sent him two pieces of information. Number one of which, I thought there might have been a possible problem with the sample size, so I took another independent set of ten data samples, uh, specifically ten runs of the five trial set there, and uh, basically out of the 50, to, uh, 50 tri uh, total trials, I got approximately 13 within the plus minus 5 error bar. So I sent him that data, and I also sent him the uh, relevance in relation to the responses, and asked if there might be a couple of flaws with the test, or the possibility that the test as constructed by the Science Museum not, might have not been appropriate. The first thing he told me was that the uh, remarks of 13 out of 50 he, I was getting were completely in sync with the uh, average mean of approximately 5 out of 20 that neurotypicals who receive temporal magnetic stimulation uh, under his original study achieved. So basically, like I said, the heightened ability to attention detail, which is savant-like. Uh, so apparently my, my accuracy rate was on par. However, he did say there was one minor difference between this version of the test and the original version which he did and was replicated by independent researchers. The original version did not have upper and lower boundaries stating how many dots were going to be in there on the original test. Uh, the primary reason this one had been devised was actually in consultation with him, specifically to be aimed at kids and as a public demonstration of what a test would look like. So again, there uh, he also did say, however, that this particular bias um, is only a small bias. It would not majorly affect it for most neurotypicals, i.e. so. Apparently, according to him, the correct sample size is four runs. So for those of the, the majority of you who've been responding back with successful results, take an independent sample set of four runs, and if you get five out of uh, if you get five runs within the plus minus uh, five dot error bar or better, you're in the savant range, or at least the uh, heightened ability savant like range, according to what he said. Um, prestigious savants have a much greater level of precision, according to the email he sent me back. The second uh, factor I wanted to do, um, I've had approximately 30 results now, responses, and I wanted to post my analysis back of this particular factor. With the exception of a couple of results who were uh, critical of, you know, the same Asperger's as a made-up disorder thing, practically every response which has come back is positive, at least within, you know, i.e. that they've at least gotten two or three hits on one particular of the runs, and uh, a sizable amount, say out of the 30, approximately 12 of them have received uh, five at least out of the three, two or three runs they've done, meaning that at the very least they would have hit the five out of four. So, what do I make of this particular data set? Well, there are two things which have to be assessed here. Number one of which, this data set is not very large, i.e. the number of participants has not been very large, including myself, and the Second thing which I have to worry about is the fact that the sample set is not random. Namely, just because people respond to my videos does not necessarily mean a guaranteed random sample set which is reflective of the YouTube population in general or even of the larger populace in general. However, there are a certain couple of interesting little facts I think we can draw from this. A couple of the people at least who have responded to me uh, on the comments are de also bona fide Aspies, i.e. they have Asperger's syndrome or some other form of high functioning autism spectrum disorder. Um, of those who actually responded, one of them did not get um, within the results of savantism on the test. And interestingly enough, despite the bona fide, uh, there are also a higher sample set of these people who are also scientifically oriented, skeptics, and uh, atheists amongst uh, my fellow respondents across the board of these 30 respondents. There is also one other interesting little fact that can be uh, attri that, um, attributed here. The YouTube population in general is not necessarily reflective of the population at large in the outside world. An example of this is the overwhelming support Ron Paul got for 2008 on YouTube, 
when in the outside world he didn't really have much of a percentage at all. If, if memory serves, he only got a less than 2% of the overall vote popular-wise. Um, actually, maybe that was less than 1%. What was Ralph Nader? Anyway, the point being is that because of the fact that the YouTube population is biased already, it is possible that, assuming we discount for biases, etc., in the sample size, that perhaps the overall YouTube population may have a higher concentration of people with higher attention to literal detail and other techniques of higher IQ, um, savantism, and possibly even a greater range of um, differing types of mental thought process, which could be mental disorders or anything else, than might be in the normal population. So these are some things we're thinking about at the moment, and I'm still keeping the video open to continue responses. I'm hoping as the sample size gets larger, we'll reduce some of this bias a bit more and get a clearer response as to what the actual percentages of people on YouTube who have this sort of capability. Um, one final note before I go. Again, people, if you're going to do this test, um, the idea is to run four runs of the five trials each. Not um, Ten runs was too much, but apparently two or three runs is not enough. So just bear in mind for those of you who are unsure, the correct sample size is four runs, um, i.e. four attempts at it since every individual time you do it is counted as five trials. And remember, you're looking for success. Um, what constitutes a hit is being plus or minus five dots of the actual number that's been randomly generated by the computer. So yeah, um, enjoy!